Claudia Gopon, who is president and CEO of Target Latino, which is a multicultural marketing agency with offices in Atlanta, Buenos Aires, New York, Barcelona. She's been featured in Adweek, CNN and Espanol, Hispanic Business, and other national and international uh, media outlets. Uh, she was a panelist at the VIP launch of CNN's Latino in America with Soledad O'Brien, and she's uh, contributed to companies like Xerox, AT&T, Citibank, Papa John's, Liberty Mutual, uh, Sherwin William, and Verizon, among others. So, Claudia, uh, I'll turn it over to you, and, and welcome. Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody. Okay, Let, we're going to cover first a brief overview of what the Hispanic market looks like now. We will then analyze the past, and then we're going to move on to the future. And finally, we're going to cover a little bit of Latinos and technology, especially the myths. So everybody is talking about the Hispanic market, and many question themselves. Should I address it? Will this market be a fad? Will it go away? Will it assimilate into the general market? Will it disappear? And the worst question of it, of it all is if I do cater to them, how do I market to them if it's not in Spanish anymore? Well, we're living in a time when our world is being redefined. And even as you hear this, America continues to change. When you go to bed tonight, it will have changed even more. And within the past 20 years, the Hispanic market projections have become a reality, our reality. So consider these facts, which all of you know by heart, probably. Um, there are over 50 million Hispanics living in the United States, and by 2050, the number is projected to grow to 130 million, and that's over 250% growth. We know this. Hispanics have been moving to other states non-traditional Hispanic states. How do they there? Now we can't even find them this way. U.S. Hispanics purchasing power, over one trillion. Our national debt increase, three trillion, so this is a third perspective. <laughs> Hispanics are the largest ethnic group. Hispanic households spend as much, almost as much as the general market households, and they earn about 70% of what the general market household earns. So really, in relative terms, they spend more. They also earn nearly 30% more than the black households. But to understand the future, we need to learn about the past. So let's take a look at the Hispanic acculturation process. When we look at the Hispanic market, we do make a difference between acculturation versus assimilation. Remember, acculturation is to forego your previous culture and take on a new one, early immigration into the United States, 1900s, eh? end of the 1800s. You're going to speak English, and you're going to eat uh, um, frosted flakes, and <laughs> end of story. Now there's, uh, a, there's sorry, that was assimilation. Um, a cooperation is to actually acquire a new culture and learn to navigate in a new culture while still keeping your own. So. This one is the typical one. We know that the yellow circle is the Latino culture, and the, um, in the red circle is the American culture. The people who know how to navigate the yellow circle are called non-acculturated. The people who know how to navigate the red circle are called fully acculturated, and the happy ones in the middle who know to navigate how to navigate both cultures are the semi-acculturated. What takes them from one circle to the next or to the intersection is time, Eventually, everybody gets there. Education, that gets them faster there. And socioeconomic status in the home country also gets them even faster. The higher the socioeconomic status was in the home country because they more than likely had uh, some type of contact with a different culture other than their own. And on the right side, the polyacculturated actually acculturate into the Latino culture due to their families. So... Um, this is a very simplistic approach because we all know things have changed. Now we need to take into consideration other factors. Um, my, uh, Chris, you can move to the next one. <laughs> um, the other factors that we need to take into consideration are attitudes about heritage, culture, life in the U.S., beliefs about family, religion, other aspects of the role in society, shopping habits, brand, type, brand selection criteria, leisure activities, Language proficiency, media preferences, opinions on immigration. So this new study divides these three previous segments into seven. 
and we can see the just move inners, which are, which are reason to rival, funny, dependent, struggling, but optimistic, FOBs, fashionistas on a budget, accidental explorers, the enlightened, the doubting Tomases, the Latin flavored, the SYL single young Latinos, English dominant, free thinkers, multicultural. So this is just one way of looking at the market, not the solution to all. I always say you have to look at your own and slice it and dice it as you need to. So suppose you're targeting millennials, and because you know they are the new generation, you develop a strategy based on this. Well, Latino millennials were not given a prize every time they did something, and their parents did not go to school to complain to the teacher for this or that. They grew up seeing their parents work hard, and they were inspired by this. So a strategy focused on me will not generate with these millennials, will not resonate with these millennials. When these extremely young native-born Hispanic consumers get to have their own families and become mature adults, they will imprint their values and priorities on consumer culture, politics, education, and other aspects of American life. Remember that they're a strong portion of the millennials. And they will remember their history. They will remember their family struggles or how they were treated. They will remember when they had to act as parents to their parents translating and interpreting for them. Yes, they were born in the U.S., but that does not mean they automatically, they're automatically separated from their family's experiences and influence or forget that they have lived different experiences so far. So being as they are participants to their parents' experiences with your brand, what do those experiences look like to them? What do they look like to their parents? So what is the message you are sending to them? These Hispanic millennials are at the forefront of the multicultural frontier. The influence of the cultures and they're influenced by them as well. You will find a Latino whose best friend is black and his girlfriend is Asian. They will reshape markets and lifestyles, and at the same time, these multicultural consumers have blended into the population, but they retain their own unique cultural traits, behaviors, and desires that influence their responses, purchasing, and loyalty. This growing diversity requires even more insight and understanding of the cultural and ethnic nuances and differences that drive behavior and purchase and connect with consumers in a unique way. So now let's go into, yes, show me the numbers. Um, you can see 2011, we have 17% of the U.S. population is Hispanic. Uh, that means six. Uh, one in six people is Hispanic, and when we get to 2050, 30%, almost 30% of the population will be Hispanic. That's one in three. Okay. So four things. Let's move on to the last piece, Hispanics and technology. Four things count very heavily towards Hispanics' early adoption of social media and new technology. Number one, Latino culture is gregarious by nature. We socialize, we friend, we welcome everybody, we interact with everybody. Nobody is an outcast in our book from the conversation. Hence, social media is just a new way of me or media through which we achieve this, the connection, the socialization, and we stay connected. Second, why did Hispanics take on early adoption of new technologies and social media? Well, Latin America had very bad infrastructure of technology. Landlines were very scarce, no infrastructure, so the cell phone arrives and solves this problem, right? You don't have to wait for somebody to install a phone in your home, a, a wire phone to go for wires. So um, voice communications are prohibitively expensive, and Latinos, therefore, learn to text within their countries at all ages. The second thing is, because they're so expensive for international calls, we communicate through MSN, Skype, etc., which are free. So, again, early adoption of technology in order to stay connected to family. Family ties, the third one, in the cost of communications, distances, cost, therefore, they're more willing to try new technologies. And the fourth one, Hispanics are a younger demographic, and they're already born in the digital era. 
So be aware that a corporation level does not equate with technological sophistication. The difference between the online Hispanic and the offline Hispanic is more tied to country of origin and this in turn to educational levels. Country of origin for offline Hispanics prevalent, Mexico. Country of origin prevalent for online Hispanics, South America. All the countries combined, they're the most prevalent. Higher levels of education and higher levels of acculturation. That does not mean that Mexican Hispanics are not online. They are. Do they have access to the Internet? They do. Do they access the Internet? via their own computer, maybe. Ford launched a website that allowed visitors to choose, it was, this was really cool, to choose between Spanish, English, or, or Spanglish. So they actually could, with a little lever, they could choose the level of language they, could, they chose they preferred to read that website on. And they actually found out that most people chose Spanglish, but all the three choices were selected. Hispanics are online a lot. We can move on to the next. And they get their information from friends and other people's opinions. They trust people, rate people's ratings of products and services. They believe that the Internet enhances their lives. Take a look at how it already improved their lives by enabling increased communication with their families. This does not mean you should not advertise on other media. Just do not believe this myth about Hispanics and technology. Remember that Hispanics watch TV more than most, and they watch advertising and enjoy it. You just have to understand how to reach them and find innovative and relevant ways to connect with them. Consumer connection and cultural insight is key to the strategy and helps build bottom line for your brand. Thank you.